I'm here with Matt, uh, who is from North Dakota and is the director of Bobcat Innovation and Acceleration. And he's here today to talk to us through this incredible machine, a T7X. Matt, thank you for agreeing to do this yes. and talking around this machine. Where, where do we start? So let's start with just what innovation is for Bobcat. And our goal was to develop a concept that didn't exist in the market. Because, yeah, this is the world's first this is electric the world's factor. First. I didn't even think something like this would be possible in terms of getting the power right. out of it. Mm -hmm. How long does something like that actually take? It's a great question. And it depends on what type of technology and what's available in the industry. And with this technology, we didn't know yet at the time, two years ago, how long it might take because the components didn't exist. Mm. Everything on this machine is custom. So over a two year period, mm. idea to concept, to believability in the industry, to launching this, uh, it's been a tremendous ride. What exactly are the standout points on this T7 electric that mm -hmm. make it so unique as you're presenting? So we replaced the hydraulic cylinders with what we call ball screw actuators. Mm -hmm. So this is a motor, this is a ball screw, it has a similar function to a cylinder, except it's all electric. There are no hydraulics whatsoever. So no hydraulic oil? No hydraulic oil, no hydraulic fluids, no oil in an engine, mm -hmm. uh, no tube lines, no fittings, no leak points. Mm -hmm. You know, the most common customer complaint on a job site is that a fitting breaks or a hose uh, breaks and it leaks oil. So this machine eradicates all those problems? Eliminates them. When we say all electric, we mean all electric. There are no other functions on this machine except electric. Mm -hmm. So a battery, some motor controllers, two tilt ball screw actuators, mm -hmm. two lift mm -hmm. ball screw actuators, so one on each side, yeah. and two traction motors. So six main components and that's all. Yeah. Under the cab there are no components, it's empty. It's empty. It's so in terms of weight distribution then, is that how you're getting the stability on the machine? You mentioned a while ago the weight of yep. some of these components. Yeah, the actuators are extremely heavy. So the machine itself is very similarly, uh, similar to a T76 in weight. And from a power perspective, this machine will exceed the power of a T76 by at least 2x. Uh, from it will torque exceed the power exceeds, and torque absolutely. of the traditional T76. Yep. Side by side, yeah. That's incredible. Yep. Were you guys expecting to level that level of performance? We were told by a lot of industry partners that this wouldn't be possible. Mm. And we ignored that. We're innovation. We want to go and be aggressive mm -hmm. and accelerate that development. And, and we experienced a lot of these uh, improvements as we developed it. Mm -hmm. So the power and the traction, the power and the lift, the responsiveness, because mm -hmm. we want this to feel for a customer like a hydraulic machine. This machine, when you turn it on, there is zero noise. Really? Zero noise. Yeah. The only noise you hear is when you lift the lift arm, it has a motor noise and that's all. I imagine the first question that a lot of people would have is runtime. How yep. long will you get in terms of running a runtime on a machine as big as this and as powerful, right. as strong as this? Okay. So when you're running this machine, it really depends on what your job function is. Mm -hmm. So if you were to run this machine in a dig cycle, 100% consistent, you will get about four hours of runtime. Mm -hmm. Then you recharge the battery, yep. it takes about 10 hours to recharge okay. it. And will there be like the likes of a supercharger functionality at some stage in the future? Yeah, similar to the automotive industry, we want to be able to recharge faster. Yeah. So that's in development, not available now. And then in terms of, look, of skid steers, track loaders, I mm -hmm. always think of attachments. Ah. And I'm a big believer in attachments. Yeah. Will we see the same versatility on the likes of these electric loaders with attachments that mm -hmm. we have seen down through the last 60 years yep. on the diesel yep. machines? Great question. So the one thing that we are working on today that we don't have available yet are electric attachments. Mm -hmm. So there's four attachments we plan to have available within the next year. Attachments like an auger oh, wow. or an angle broom yeah. or a grapple and eventually a breaker, a powered breaker, yes. all electric. Fantastic. Yeah, so. it's, it's, it's incredible to see it. Mm -hmm. It's incredible to hear the story behind it. 18 yeah. months, two years of development yeah. and for the machine to be performing as good as it is, you guys must be super excited. Uh, it's exciting to see a process work yeah and for us to be able to accelerate and d disrupt our own industry mm -hmm. is our goal. Well, I was at a meeting once and they spoke about uh, diversification and innovation as being the two pillars that Bobcat want to stand behind now yeah. going forward. Yeah. Certainly with a product like this, you guys have knocked it out of the park. Oh, excellent. Um, but look, thank you so much, Matt, for giving us an introduction to this machine. Hello everyone, William from Adair Machinery here. And today we have gone on the road to County Galway, where we're gonna test out the all new range of Bobcat agricultural telehandlers here on Keebney's Farm. <laughs> 